Welcome everyone, in this video we will be taking a look at the insertion sort algorithm. And it has been a while since I've made one of these and I've not forgotten about this project and I'm still continuing my own journey in learning algorithms. But yeah, I actually recently got a bit distracted working on the Flutter uh, Clocks Challenge or that competition that's going on. So going back to the topic of this video, we will be covering the insertion sort algorithm. And as you can see, there are a number of other ones that I've already made. Um, so check out the other videos if you are interested in that. So I've added the insertion sort algorithm in the exact same way that I did bubble sort. And it uses the same mechanics under the hood. It's just a different algorithm. So it will be just a slightly different order of execution. And if you are interested, you can always go take a look at the previous videos if you haven't seen any of them. But yeah, in this video, we will just be talking about insertion sort. If you have seen the previous videos, you might also note that it's now a web app and um, in the previous demos, I demoed it on a mobile device. So no real reason that I'm doing the web app one now. When I started recording this, I was like, maybe I should just try and see what it looks like on the web. So um, this is that. Um, I'm just running it locally. At some point, I will probably add it to the Fun with Flutter website. At the current moment in time, it is a little bit janky. It's not not very performance, especially um, the page views. Anything that requires dragging or scrolling is still a bit janky with Flutterweb. Um, but the actual animations, for example, um, the bubble sort one, I, it's it's still um, really decent. It, it looks good. And um, I'm actually going to demo the bubble sort before I go into insertion sort. Insertion sort because it actually illustrates um, the difference between the two. Because bubble sort, what that does. It takes the largest number, or it tries to find the largest number in the um, the list of numbers, and then it puts it in the, the final position. So as you can see, we have 74, and this will be the biggest one, so it will put it at the end. And then it will just iterate through everything, excluding the last one that's in the correct position. So I'm showing you this because insertion sort is the exact opposite. I'm just going to reload this because I think it might uh, take up too much resources if I do both. So let us actually start the demo of insertion sort. So I'm gonna hit sort, and then I'm just gonna slow this down so I can actually discuss and show you what is happening. So as you can see, we started at 19, and then we went through to the bottom, and then we went to 22, and then we went all the way to the left, and currently we're at 46. So what we're doing is we're trying to take 46 and put it in its correct position. So now everything to the left of um, 46 is sorted. So basically we have statically, or not statically, we have two arrays uh, constantly. Um, the array to the left will always be sorted, or at least that is what we try to sort. And the array to the right, of so the list of numbers to the right, is the unsorted list. So we're currently looking at 44. So now 44 is smaller than 57, so we swap it. So now we just continuously look between all of these until 44 is in its correct position. And now we're just going to the bottom. Now the same is happening for 35. We try and look for 35's um, correct position. So we'll swap um, 35 with all of these numbers until 35 no longer needs to be swapped. And then we're just working our way through. So this will continue to happen. So I'm just going to speed it, this up a little, little bit. And yeah. Um, it's a very simple algorithm and it's literally just taking um, or going one step further each time the iteration happens and putting that number in the, in the correct position. So 39 will be between 35 and 44. The next um, loop will look at 57, I believe. I think it's 57 or 69. If it's 57, 57 is at the correct position and that's all it will do. 69 was at the correct position, that's all it had to do. So next time it's going to be 49 and it's going to put 49 between 46 and 57 and then it will just run through to the end. So let's speed this up and then um, you'll see what happens in the end. So what this algorithm tries is it tries to maintain a sorted list on the left side of the number that you're currently looking at. And once the algorithm finishes, everything is just marked as green. So something to note there is you can only actually say that the list is fully sorted once everything has been looked at. Um, you can't say that one, for example, or let's say four, um, is sorted 
once it's placed because there could be a three or a two in the final position. So the list or all of these can only be identified as sorted once the entire list has been iterated through. So to the right, we have the actual algorithm. What we are doing is we are iterating from the first node to the last node. So this is this first for loop that you see. And then we are taking a look at the last node or we're setting J equal to I. So as an example, if we start this sort very slow, we will go from one to zero and then from two to zero. And then the next time we will go from three to zero and then four to zero and then five to zero. So that is what this condition is um, to um, basically make sure that we are looking from the, the highest number and then we just subtract until we are at zero. And then there's this additional and check to say, um, for example, if, let's slow this down again. If zero is smaller than 44, then we do a swap. So if the value in um, J that we're currently looking at is smaller than J minus one, so the, the node to the left, as it is the case here, then it will swap, then it will swap. And then this um, gets triggered and all this does is this executes the swap to happen. And yeah, that is that. That is all you need to know to do in search and sort. Um, quite easy to do. If you are interested in the source code, I will upload this to GitHub. And you will also see that I've already done the quick sort algorithm, which I haven't covered in a video. And that will be the next, next video. I just did this because I was um, interested in actually visualizing the quick sort algorithm. And um, I'll also be extending this application um, to my website. So at some point you'll see um, the algorithm visualizer on the Fun with Flutter website. And uh, I'm not sure when I'll be doing that. It's a little bit laggy, as I said. Once I do that, I will definitely make a video to show you how easy it is to port an app to um, Flutter for web. And yeah, definitely check out the new uh, Fun with app. Or well, not new, it's the same, but I, I did some optimizations here and there. And it's now um, using the beta channel for uh, Flutter Web. And you will also see there's this little button here called the wall. And yeah, definitely go give that one a click to see what happens. And if you are interested in learning more algorithms, I definitely recommend Algo Experts. This is what I'm using to learn these algorithms and to watch explanation videos to help me better understand before I start. Um, a visualization challenge. And yeah, this has helped me a lot. As you can see, I have a lot still left to do. I've been slacking a bit. As I mentioned, I've been um, working on the uh, Flutter Clock Challenge. Um, but yeah, it's, it's loads of help. Uh, you can see that you can also sort by uh, different categories. So this is what I'm currently doing. I'm, I'm gonna do them category, category by category because that's a bit easier than to also go into the visualization. Uh, somewhere here in the bottom, yeah, searching. And as you can see, we have searching here. Um, I've completed most of them. I still need to mark them as completed and then sorting as well. For some of these searching ones, it's a bit hard to do visualization and, and it also doesn't really make sense. Um, if you do go to Algo Expert, you'll see some of them are very tailored to um, a interview setting, I suppose. Um, like maybe we won't have like a real world application, but it's more like a fun way to basically stretch your imagination to see how you can solve a problem creatively. But yeah, definitely go check this out. As you can see, if you go to the insertion sorts algorithm or not algorithm, but the challenge, they give you an explanation. And then there are also a number of uh, hints you can do. So depending on the question and how easy it is, there might be five hints. And it also discusses the time complexity. And um, you can also set a little timer. So you can say start timer and see how long it actually takes you to, to finish a, um, one of these algorithms. At the very bottom, there's also a video explanation. So um, the guy who makes this site, so the CEO, his name is Clement. Uh, he does a fantastic job explaining these algorithms and he goes step by step in a very slow and concise manner discussing um, the inner workings of the algorithms as well as the time and space complexity. And um, yeah, you'll see they recently added Swift as a language, which if you are on the Fun with Flutter website or Fun with Flutter YouTube channel, I guess you do not care. Uh, we might care about Swift. Um, yeah, and maybe in the future they will add Dart, seeing as Dart is such a 
fast growing language, I'm pretty sure at some point they will support it. But yeah, it's also a good idea to uh, flex your muscles in different languages as well. I'm personally using Go because I'm trying to learn Go. But yeah, that's that. Um, thanks for listening up until now. If you are interested in Algo Expert and you decide to actually uh, purchase this as a, as a product, you can use the promo code FUNWITH for a 15% discount and that is also a great way to support the channel. Again, thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.